If there's a piece of advice that makes me nervous, it's when people say that you don't have to look at, worry about, or even open up your folders panel in Lightroom. And while I understand the spirit of where they're headed with this advice, I think it has the potential to be dangerous, especially for beginners, and here's why. How you decide to set up and structure your folders panel in Lightroom is literally the entire foundation of your catalog. And just like when you're building a house, you need to make sure you start on a solid foundation. And then, and only then, should you move on to building your house of organizational wonder with things like keywords and collections and all of the tools that Adobe gives us. Now, since there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution on how you should structure your folders in Lightroom, I'm going to walk through a few different options of how you could do it. That way, you know that you are selecting the right method for you and your photography. Along the way, I'm going to talk about some tips of why I think it is advantageous to open up that folders panel and how I use it in my workflow. And if you think you got a crack in the foundation, or even if you think you have a need an entire overhaul, I'm going to look at an easy and straightforward way on how you could get started with the cleanup process. That's a lot to cover. So I think maybe now it's time. Let's get started. Now, again, we are in the library module in Lightroom, and we'll go on the left hand side to the folders panel and open that up. And this is all of your image library. You can see it on multiple hard drives or whatever you have imported into Lightroom should appear here. Now the first tip is critical um, and super simple, but critical again, and that is to create a parent folder. And what a parent folder is, is a top level folder that contains all of our subfolders below here and ultimately holds our entire photo library. So all of our files and the best thing about having a parent folder is you always have just one click. Say we want to copy our entire photo library over to a new hard drive. We copy this parent level folder, move that over and say we want that and all of the subfolders to copy. If you wanna back up to cloud storage, you would tell the cloud storage, I want this folder and all of the subfolders. And within Lightroom, we can always right click and say synchronize folder. And this would be synchronizing this folder and all of the subfolders below it to make sure that whatever matches in Lightroom is matching what's out on your hard drive. Let's say we just copy some extra photos from our SD card and we forget to import them. This is an easy way to catch that. So it, one of the easiest ways to create a subfolder or to create a parent folder is um, just to create a folder and drag and drop. So here you could see I have 2023 and they don't fall in line this is organized by date. This is just one example. So hold on and we'll get to other ways to organize. But I would just click. I'm on the top level folder right now, but I would just click the plus sign, hit add subfolder. I'll keep my naming convention and then hit create. And you'll see my 2023 subfolder has been created. And I can simply take my 2023 folders with my photos and drag and drop. And what Lightroom's going to ask me is moving files on disk. Do you want to do this? And what it's doing is it's going to move them in Lightroom so they appear this way, but it's also going to do double work in moving them on the hard drive. So now what I see here is what I will see out on my hard drive. So if I right click and I say show in Finder or show out on my hard drive, here is my library and it had moved that folder for me. So let's move these other two really quick. I'll go back to Lightroom. Let's say we're going to drag and drop these two. I selected them both by holding down the shift key. I'm going to drag them into 2023. Again, it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to move them? I say, yes, let's get this cleaned up and in the right order where it needs to be. And if I go back out and look at my hard drive, all of a sudden magically, <laughs> They are all in line. So this is one of the reasons that we always, always, if an item was within Lightroom, we move it from within Lightroom or we make those changes to the files, to the folders, and to the structure from within Lightroom. Sorry, we need a quick little sidebar that we just want to have everybody on that same foundation. Remember, Lightroom isn't storing your photos. Your photos are somewhere on your computer's hard drive or what I really recommend is an external hard drive. Now, it just knows how to look and find where those photos are and read the file. So think of, life, think of Lightroom as a lifeguard who knows and is watching all of your photos and files in the pool. But 
if you happen, this is once photos and files are already in Lightroom, if you happen to go outside on your hard drive and change a file name or your folder name or the structure, Lightroom, let's just say, gets distracted by that. I got some sunblock in my eyes. I wasn't watching what you were doing because it was outside of Lightroom. And now I can't find the file or folder. I kind of freak out. So instead of doing my job and jumping in to save your file, what I do is I kind of just decide to go on break. So I gray out the folder, put a little question mark on it, and move on and make you do that cleanup work. So it's a best practice. Once your photos are already in Lightroom, the, you should rename your files, your folders, or restructure them from within Lightroom. All right, back to the show. Now this naturally brings us to a new point of how would we structure our folder library within Lightroom and set up our hierarchy. And we are going to talk about in just a minute about three different ways I think of categorizing things, and that's by date, by location, and by theme. But first, let's also talk about why I think it is really important to keep date somewhere in your folder structure in some fashion. Um, there's a few different reasons, but one of the most important reasons for me is when you think about how many photos you are going to take over your journey as a photographer. Think 10 years in the future, you are going to have hundreds of thousands of photographs. We're talking terabytes of data when it's all said and done, the more and more you go into this journey. I don't necessarily want all of my folder photos just clumped into a folder that is just not manageable for me. And even though we can use um, the keywords over here and the collections, again, when you're talking about backing up folders or what is copied over to your hard drive, all of that stuff is important. And what's in sizable chunks, like let's copy all of our 2023 photos over to a new hard drive and make sure they're backed up. And let's take anything that's 2020 and before and let's archive that. All of these are critical decisions that I make and they're normally based on date because the stuff that is more recent is the stuff I'm working with and this is the stuff that is not as important to me at the time. There's maybe a few photos that I'll bring forward, but the majority of that is going to become archived over time. All right. I think that sets up all of the stage where we can actually start talking about how we structure and organize the folders and naming conventions. Now, the first thing I will mention is another bonus tip. So many bonus tips, but one of the bonus tips is if you hold down the Alt key and close all your folders, everything will close up. Similarly, if I hold down the Alt key and open, every folder will stay open. So if you're doing a whole bunch of scrolling with your folders and you are manually trying to click them all closed, you don't have to do that. You can just scroll all the way up to the top. Again, another bonus of having that parent folder. We'll hold down the Alt or the Option key and we will close them all. And the next time you open again, they're nice and tidy again and you can just go digging probably through your most recent items. So again, we are now going to dive into the meat and potatoes of this. We are going to talk about whether we want to organize by date, by location, by theme, or maybe do a combination of each to figure out what works best for you. Now, tip number four is decide if you want to organize your folders by date, location, theme, or something else that is intuitive to you. There's no wrong answers to your strategy, but the point is have a strategy because this can either make your life easier or introduce unnecessary or potentially unnecessary frustration. And that's why it's critical. Take a few minutes and think about what's going to work for best for you, your photography, what is intuitive to you? How do you think about your photography? And you're going to see, I kind of use a little bit of all three in different ways. When we first look at dates, I like dates for the reason that if we look at how Lightroom organize folders on the same level, they're alphanumerically ordered. So they can easily keep things in chronological order. For example, 2022.01 to signify January, 02 February all the way through. Well, I didn't go to the end of the year, but 10, fine, <laughs> October. I can keep everything in chronological order. For me, the advent, the advantageous part of this is it's easy for me to look across my backups, to look at the cloud and make sure everything has been copied over to all of the locations it should be copied to make sure I have multiple backups in place. So if something kind of goes wrong, it's a little bit easier for me to pinpoint versus if everything was just in a 2022 folder. Now, in addition to that, with date, 
I don't just use the number and that's really the key with this structure is you got to put some meaning behind it. I highly, highly, we have to label these anyway, give them some meaning so that way when you are looking on your folder system and not in Lightroom, you don't have to do too much digging to know exactly what photos are in which folders. Because again, as these years add up, there's going to be lots of photos there and we want to get a good handle on things here because it doesn't mean to say I never would have thought that I would have been photographing gardens and birds as much as I am now earlier in my photography journey. But because I have my folders organized, it's kind of easy for me to go back and cherry pick different things that I want to go back and relook at and potentially edit again, or photos that I've never edited before and go back to that. So if we're not going to do it by date, let's look at location. As landscape and nature photographers, quite often we get to go back and visit places multiple times. So you could have it by continent if you are a world traveler, or if you're not, you can simply have things starting from states. But then within the states, I don't just pile all my photos together. I still keep them in subfolders with the date format so they're in chronological order. Because if I visit the Smoky Mountains for 10 years, absolutely, I hope that I will be using photos from that first trip and that last trip. But I want to have an easy way, um, especially early on in my journey, those older photos are not something that I'm using because I have evolved as a photographer. And I hope that for all of us that we get better within time. So it's easy for me then to pull those out of collections or not have them used in collections and say these aren't the photos that I want to use anymore. Now again, with stars and keywords and collections, I still absolutely go into collections and have locations and have national parks and have my states organized by automatic collections. But I'm already renaming these folders. It's really easy because these come back from a trip. So this is how I chose to organize things. And if it's not by location, I also like to think of things in themes. If you are early in your photography journey, I encourage you to photograph as much as you can. So create different buckets. For me, I photograph animals and that includes birds and wildlife, some portraiture, mostly my family, but that is in there as well. Garden is more my macro flowers and smaller scenes. Nature is landscape photography, wider intimate scenes, sports. Travel is more cityscapes, so architecture, people, all of that kind of stuff. Think about maybe you photograph real estate or weddings. Whatever it is, what are the big buckets, concerts that you can put your photography in? So you can do that like this, but if I still open those subfolders for garden, I have the year to keep everything in chronological order. I have the state that was used. Potentially you could put the country abbreviation code, and then I put the place. For nature, I still have the state abbreviation. I have the national park or the places location, but then I use NP and SP to signify national park or state park. And that brings me to tip number five, strategize and be consistent with your naming conventions because this is the clutch thing when you look forward into the future. I always use NP, I always use State Park, I like to use abbreviations, but then I also prefer to, let's pull out a theme here and let's go back to dates in 2022. Here are my buckets that I like to use a lot. I do a lot of garden visits. Nature again is my landscape photography trips because it's grand landscapes and smaller scenes. But if you are consistent with how you choose to name things, it is so easy to sort and find new collections and new ways to keyword your photos. Because that goes to tip number six. All the way on top of your folders is this filter folders bar. And I think a lot of people overlook this, but it's so powerful when you name your folders. I can easily look at NP, all of my national park trips. So if I happen to organize by date, this will all pop up through years. If I organize by location, and again, I don't have a lot of examples, but just in your mind picture, it would have all of the different states 
as well as all of your different national park trips. If you organize just by nature and garden or cityscapes, that again could be in there. We can do different words with, let's say, we want to look for all of my PA trips. So every time I photographed in Pennsylvania, it's easy to come up as well. Now again, PA has Patagonia, so that doesn't necessarily always work, but it gives me a great way to down select my work and look at what I've done. I can also photograph or <laughs> photograph. <laughs> really, that's the only thing I got on my mind these days. Um, I can start labeling things birds. And these are the new buckets that I have for my photography as well, because that is an area or a direction that I'm going in. So again, just think and take a couple minutes of what works best for you. Now, if we start with something and we just have a mess, what is an easy way to start cleaning up our folders? The first thing I do when I have a mess is I just create a folder. That's my mess to organize. <laughs> so these are all the photos that they don't really have a home and I don't know if I want to do it by theme or by location. So I'm going to take a look at everything that's there. And again, remember everything is alphanumerically. So say you have a ton of folders and you want to reorganize things, you can always rename this. And if you put a zero or a one in front of it, so let's do one to start, it's going to move that folder very to the top for you. So all the stuff down below, you don't necessarily have to worry about right now on the same level but I brought my mess to the front because <laughs> that's what we're going to work on today. And that's an easy way when you open up, you don't have to do all of that scrolling. So you can label one, two, three, four, however you want. Use that to your advantage, that alphanumeric ordering. The next thing I'm going to do is hit backslash. So the backslash is bringing up a filter bar up here. So filter open, filter closed, filter open. Now I have my mess to organize. I have my filter open and I'm going to click on metadata and within my folders you have all of these different columns that you can sort by. If we click on the down arrow here, oh, oh sorry, <laughs> over here click, <laughs> you don't have to click on the down arrow, click date, you have all of these different things. So whether you've switched camera brands, whether you have keywords already in there, um, whether you want to group by shutter speeds, however is intuitive to you, GPS and map location. For me, it's easy. Let's look at date and we can group by year. We can select here to group by month. And this is going to, I mean, think about it for nature and landscape. These are pretty much our trips. So for October of 2022, okay, I was in the Smokies and this is Oregon for me. So I can either click the first one, hold down shift and click the last one to select all, or I can use command control A to select all of them. But this is a way for me to down select and start organizing my mess. So let's start with 2022 again. I'm going to look in February. These were all from my trip to Yosemite. So again, command control A to select all of my photos from 2022, February. I will go to this down arrow in my mess and hit add subfolder. I know it's 2022. I know it's 02 February. I know it was in California and Yosemite and I'll hit create. Now Lightroom has added my subfolder with those 15 folders or photos and they are in there. So let's do another one really quick. Let's go back up to metadata. Let's look at 2022 and let's look at July. So July was Pennsylvania. I will select them all with command control A. I will add a subfolder. I will label it 2022-07 for July. I know this was Pennsylvania and the Poconos. And the other thing to note is that I have include selected photos when you create this folder. And I will start creating subfolders this way. I can also just look at my whole mess folder again and I could say, show me everything. I can go down and hand select all of the birds by holding down command or control and just scroll to what makes sense. I could select all of the photos of flowers, 
whatever I want to do. Now, again, this is a little bit slower of a way. That's why if you just kind of group by years in buckets and bin them that way, you can, I feel that's faster. But potentially you have really easy buckets where you could bin things like this. I can say, okay, add a subfolder. This is 2022 birds. And that's my theme for right now. I could say animals. I could say wildlife. Whatever you want to do, be consistent and hit create. And now all of those bird folders are together. All of my Yosemite photos, all of my Poconos photos from that area. And you can just keep grouping and that makes sense to you. So that is a quick and easy way to start cleaning up folders. And there's nothing to say that you need to go back and do all of your photos. Start fresh. Decide, okay, I'm going to start organizing my photos now and just adopt a method and do this moving forward. Again, I still believe absolutely use keywords and collections and stars and color labels. There is no organizational tool that Adobe gives me that I leave behind or let it feel lonely, but I feel that folders have a lot of potential and you should open up that panel and use it to your advantage. Don't miss that opportunity. I have a few more folder tips and tricks, but I think it's important that we digest everything that we covered because that was a lot. And plus, it's important to take a moment and contemplate what folder structure really is going to work best for you before you go ahead and implement. Now, if you really can't wait and you want to get a handle on organizing your photos in Lightroom, you can check out my course, Let's Get Organized in Lightroom. Within four hours, I cover absolutely everything and nothing more of what you need to know about setting up and organizing your photos in Lightroom. But I know you may have known some of this folder advice, but I hope you found something new in this video to incorporate into your workflow. Until next time, cheers to a happy Lightroom experience.